I'm here with former Cage Wars featherweight champion, Paul, big news, use Paul. Of all the emphatic wins you've had on Cage Warriors, how does this one measure up here in Dublin? Um, it's definitely, it feels damn good to, you know, a lot of my fights have just been, I don't want to say wars because I always, I'm on top, but, you know, it's just nice to get a first round finish again. It always feels good, you know, didn't have to take any damage. I felt just clear minded the whole time beforehand, go in, went in there, just do what I, I'd done what I'd done and I'm just the best. I'm just the best, and I'm glad that people got to see another first-round KO from me tonight because people were saying, oh, you know, he's been to the decision so many times and all this. A lot of people online talking shit, but it's nice to get a first-round KO again. And you did, Yeah, you definitely called it, and obviously he was using his range. And I did say the whole time, what am I going to finish him with? A first-round KO. Yes. I said it the entire time, and here we are. And is it what you saw, you know, coming into this? Because obviously he was going to use his range, but you were so quick at countering. I just think that he holds his hands just slightly low. He's taller than me, which kind of is against him. But I just hit so hard. Like, the, the Jordan fight, I put him down a few times. Um, and it's just because he's so damn tough that he stayed in there. But me at 155 here, like, if I touch people that are going down, like, so, yeah, it's nice to get the first round KO. Are you here to stay now at 155? I mean, you obviously proved oh, yeah, that you belong in that division. No, I'm here, to, I'm, I'm here to stay at 155. Yeah, yeah. And what was going through your mind during that walkout? You almost seemed emotional. There was, it seems like there was so much going on that head of yours. Yeah, I was just I was just trying to be present. Like, when Grace was on and everybody singing, I mean, like, how blessed am I to have moments like this? Like, you know, my fellow country people mm -hmm. singing such a beautiful song with me. The first ever combat sports show in the RDS in Dublin. And to have that, it's, I mean, people would, like, it, it, it's, people, you couldn't pay enough money. That's an invaluable experience, like, and, yeah, I'm just unbelievably blessed and grateful to be able to live these types of experiences, you know. It would be crazy <clears> for <throat> the U.S. not to call you after this. But, again, we've said this so many times. <laughs> so, okay, if it doesn't happen yet, obviously, next is the title against George Hardwick. Oh, well, we'll see. You know, George had his, his chance at Red Panty Night tonight in Dublin, you know. Now, I know I would smash him any, and I would smash him tomorrow. But, of course, we're going to talk to the UFC first. Mm -hmm. We'll see what's going on, and then we'll take it from there. But, of course, two belts around the shoulder would be nice. But mm -hmm. my number one priority always is the UFC. But... If I don't become a double champ in Cage Warriors, then I'll become a double champ in the UFC instead. And someone who was a double champ that you met recently, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what were his thoughts on that, Conor McGregor? Uh, just, man, he, he's supportive, you know, and just to be around him, like one of my greatest inspirations to just spend time with him. He's literally right there in front of us with the double belts. Um, to be around that is so inspiring. You know, the, the person that showed you it was possible you know, and to, to start building a relationship with him now and, and to feed off of that energy. Whenever I met him, it came at, a, at an interesting time for me when I didn't know what was next. You know, I was trying to get fights, obviously with the whole UFC stuff, everybody knows about that. And it was just one of them weeks where I just wasn't doing the best, you know? And it just so happened that we ended up having dinner with him. And I, from, that, from that night, I just had this energy. I just felt this energy because he's a highly energetic guy, no, you know? Really? And, and I just fed off that energy and, and brought it with me, and, and here we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through this year, you've been, you've been so humble, and that's really something I admire about you. Thank you. You know, you're so wise beyond your years. You Appreciate know? it. I feel like you have so much to give, not just to this sport, but I feel like this world could use more Paul Hughes. Oh, that, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm... I'm now that everything's kind of, now I've got another fight, I can't, like, I, I do feel proud of myself and how I've carried myself as a man this, this year. Yeah. Um, at, but at the end of the day, winners like to see other winners win. So, like, yeah. all the things going on, like, it has, it's energized me. It hasn't made me go, oh, you know, down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. it's, it's lifted me more than anything, you know, and that's just one of my best, uh, one of my best things is the ability to change the obstacles into advantages, like, and that's just what I do. And, yeah, it feels good. Well, I've always said it. Whatever is next for you, I will always be a Paul Hughes fan. Thank you so much. Thank you for You're your the time. best. Thank you. I appreciate it.